Hi YouTube people, today we're going to take a look at the Windows 10 Tech Preview running on an Asus VivoTab Note 8. So this device is a Windows 8.1 device, so it should fare pretty well under 10.1. Uh, so what I tried to do was complete a completely fresh, clean install using the Tech Preview ISO. And in order to do that, what you have to do is use an OTG cable on this device along with the USB hub to uh, use the keyboard and mouse to allow you to plug in and start working with the device. Because if, if you just plug a USB stick in with a tech preview on it, you will get to a prompt and then you will have no way to input because the touchscreen drivers do not auto load in that Windows setup environment at least the way that the tech preview is set up so that's what I did I just hooked up the USB hub and was able with the keyboard and mouse to get the tech preview installed on the BioTab Note 8 once in Windows I was able to install all the 8.1 drivers off of Asus's website and everything appears to be completely functional and it's working really well. So I thought I'd just touch on what you can do here in Windows 10. So the big thing that everyone's talking about is the new start menu, which is really not new. It's old, but revised. So uh, it's really great to see this. I've been saying since Windows 8 came out that the way they should do this is exactly how they've done it here. So you have basically the Windows 7 start menu on this side with a little hanger where you can still get your live tiles. So it's a pretty good solution. You can go to all apps right there. You can grab apps that you'll use a lot and pull them over to the start screen. And you can also still uh, resize, make it a large or a wide tile and you still have pretty much all the features of the normal start screen. Now if you want just the start screen, so you're like, uh, I'm actually used to the start screen, I want it back. If you right click on the taskbar and go properties, there's this new tab called start menu. And if you click on that, there's use the start menu instead of the start screen. I don't know if you can read that on this teeny little display, but if you uncheck that, it will have you sign out and uh, I'm getting an error on that I don't know what that is so let me enter in my password okay and as you can see the normal Windows 8 start screen that you're used to is back but it's not back exactly how you remember it on Windows 8.1. For instance, if I go ahead and open up uh, the Windows Store, you can see it actually opens in the desktop environment currently, which is different. So it may take a little getting used to, but you can actually use it like a normal app. So it, uh, it must be having, having Wi-Fi issues at my house. So you can use the store. So that's a new feature. You can use Metro apps in windowed environments. So that's kind of nice. You can also use Snap2 features with Metro apps. So let me pull out my stylus because it actually doesn't work using a touch environment. So we're going to pretend this is a mouse, so you can then snap to the side, snap to maximize, snap left. So you get uh, more enhanced features. And do you see what I'm doing there? You can actually snap to the side and then drag down and have it use less of the screen. So if I had a larger display, that would actually snap to the quarters of the display. But since we don't, it's, it's not snapping to those. So let's go ahead and 
I'm going to turn the start menu back on because what's the point of looking at this if you're just going to use the old Windows 8 menu? So let's log back in. There we are, and use that Windows new Windows Start menu. So let's touch on some of the other features that you get. In terms of, uh, for, I mean, for the most part, it's it's Windows 8 <laughs> with a little bit of a difference, which is fine. Windows 8 is actually great, other than some of the weird interface issues that you deal with. Um, so let's look at the desktops feature. So for example, say I'm on. I'm using the default desktop and maybe I'm logged into work here and I'm working in uh, maybe the let's go ahead and choose the calendar app so let's say I'm using my calendar app I'm using my browser and uh, I decide you know what um, doing some work over here but I want to use a different desktop and do something else. So you can click this button right here which is the task view and you can click here which says add a desktop. So if you click add a desktop you now have a completely new uh, desktop to work with. Your applications open and the other desktop aren't closed they're still there and you can tell that they're there because they have a teeny little bar underneath and you can actually still hover the mouse over it and go into those apps if you would like and that takes you back to the first desktop so if we want to go back to desktop 2 uh, we can do that so here we are at desktop 2 let's open uh, say we want to manipulate some files so here's one desktop you can slide in from the left and go to the other desktop so slide in from the left desktop 1 desktop 2 so it's actually a really nice feature uh, to have here in Windows 10. A few little icon differences that you can see, um, but other than that, uh, it's pretty much Windows 8 with uh, some really nice UI enhancements. So the only thing that I've noticed is that there is no Internet Explorer that is built completely for Metro anymore, or the modern UI, I guess. So if you go into Internet Explorer, you're not getting the full screen experience. So the one, one of the things I really liked about Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 was the Internet Explorer browser. It had really nice swipe in commands, it really nice features, and really nice to use in a tablet. So I don't see that here in Windows 10. So I'm sure that will be coming. I'm sure there'll be a way to do that. Even if you full screen this, this is just like the old desktop Internet Explorer. And if you look, if you do a search for Internet Explorer, you can see that there's only the one on here. So the modern Internet Explorer is missing, which would be nice to figure out a way to get that back. I'm sure someone will find a way to do that. But um, the other thing that's a little bit awkward is, say you are you are in, well that's weird, I'm just going to close that. Say you are working in a, a metro application such as the Windows Store, there is a way to make it go full screen, which is these three dots in the top left corner so if you click on those you can go full screen so now we're running full screen so that's nice right you can still use the charms um, but the only problem I've noticed is if you swipe away to go to like a different application or something and then go back to it it's no longer full screen so it's not sticky in its full screen settings which for some of these modern UI, they're designed to be full screen, so it's uh, maybe a little bit of a drawback. But once again, consider this tech preview is meant for people who want to mess around with early builds of software. This is not final, and you shouldn't really have an issue with it. 
It also includes a Windows Feedback app. So you can go into there and actually provide feedback on uh, Windows 8 as you're using it. So, or sorry, Windows 10 as you're using it. And my Wi Fi is down right now, so that's why you're not seeing some of that. So, um, in terms of Windows 10 on the Vivo Tab Note 8, I think it's uh, workable. I think that if you want to play around with some of the UI features, it's uh, kind of fun. But if you really need a, you know, if you're not comfortable with working around issues, maybe you want to hold off on, on installing this tech preview. But for me, it was a fun little exercise, and I'll probably keep it installed and play with it some more for the next little bit. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll have more videos. Maybe we'll try to load up Windows 10 on the Surface Pro 3 coming soon. So please subscribe. Keep watching the videos. Thanks.